Welcome back to another Bourbon Santa video. I keep getting asked on YouTube to do a collection video. So to make that one guy shut up, just kidding, but not really. I'm gonna do a collection video, okay? So this is the top shelf. This is stuff that you don't really see in my videos because they're out of the frame of my videos. Um, but up here I have all of my rye high west stuff behind here um all store picks so many different finishes it's crazy um and then i have the mash bill 2 stuff and my limestone mixing water for my equal proof bourbon battle videos and then i have the bourbon santa electric dispenser and uh santa pees out my store pick the ambarana store pick and up here, I have my little five pack of Remus's one through five. Still working on labels for these, but they are gonna get some cool labels. Then over here, we have all of my High West bourbons and the American Single Malt and the awesome sauce bottle sitting there. And this is a rotating blend of whiskeys that I sample out to my patrons um, pretty much every month. I sample out like six to eight ounces of that and then fill it with stuff that I'm currently tasting through. So it's my favorite stuff, it gets kind of infinity into there and every month it changes a little bit so it's just a rolling infinity bottle. So that's the top shelf. Okay, on this shelf, this is all major distilleries and bourbons, except for this one, this one's a blend, but anyway, all major distilleries, all their own juice, Old Forester 150th, single barrel rye and then a couple single barrel bourbons the um the texas one with the mesquite the king ranch and and then my 1915 blend stag junior bash 12 regular old buffalo tracy and the kosher rye recipe behind that uh baker's 11 year eight month store pick early times gotta have that gotta have it the old kind and then a Henry McKenna behind that, because I do love Henry McKenna. I just can't find it anymore. So I really don't drink it that often. I don't want it to go bye-bye. Um, the only 1792 that I think is good, the age 12 years. This is the only one that I actually drink. The rest of 1792 kind of hurts my throat for some reason. Uh, Woodford Double Double Oaked from the distillery. Woodford Five Wood from the distillery and then a double oak store pick and a regular Woodford store pick from a local liquor store here near me. And then we got the old Jack triple match. Um, this is that whiskey of the year contender that somebody talked a lot about. Eh, it's just okay. The Jack 100 uh, travel bottle, not the new bonded and uh, Elijah Craig store pick from inlet harbor liquors it's a nine-year-old pick it's awesome and then i got the big boy elijah craig small batch from forever ago and i love that guy he's so big and fat just like me and uh then we have the jim beam distillers masterpiece this is a px sherry finished jim beam that is probably the best thing that jim beam ever put out and I'm just sad that it's only 100 proof and not cast strength, but damn if, if it isn't good. Well, that's that shelf. Let's move on. This shelf is all craft distilleries and it's all their own juice. No sourcing on this shelf at all. So we've got um, some journeyman stuff over here. I've got another journeyman that you're going to see in a minute, but it's waiting to be reviewed. So it's on a different shelf right now. And I've got the Corset Whips and Whiskey, which is their weeded, and then Last Feather Rye from Journeyman. I like both of those very much. Then the Fiddler Soloist, which is ASW's own juice, and absolutely out of this world. Um, then Anita's Choice. Anita's Choice is currently being contract distilled, so I guess technically that one is sourced, but they are distilling this same exact juice in an identical still at their own facility now and aging it. So in the very near future, it will be 100% their own. And 
it should stay exactly the same. So we'll see. We'll see if that if that works out that way. But uh, fingers crossed. This is Wild Ride Distilling from Montana, five drops bourbon, and it's 100% from Montana. The grain, everything, and they distill it themselves out of this world. Kings County, of course, Ohio, oh, Ohio, New York. Um, barrel strength. This is came in second place in my whiskeys of the year last year. One of my absolute favorite bourbons ever. Uh, Wollersham from Wisconsin, absolutely freaking banger bourbon. Uh, this is a high rise single barrel, holy smoke. Peerless double oaked, and I just cracked this one open the other day. I haven't actually taken a pour out of it yet. I just pulled the plastic off and threw it on the shelf because I plan to very soon. Um, Chattanooga, Chattanooga. This is a Scotch cask, um, smoky Scotch finished Chattanooga whiskey. I'm not an enormous fan of Chattanooga whiskey. I'm not a huge fan of super high malt in my bourbon. I, at least the way they do it. I'm not sure what the problem is, but I don't love all their stuff. But I do like this. The Scotch cask kind of hides that or goes well with that malt level. And so it doesn't bother me too much. Uh, Redwood, their own stuff. The Bottled and Bonds, Grizzly Beast, and Rocket Top. And then we move to J. Henry, and I've got the last three years of LEs, and an eight-year single barrel, and then the last two years of La Flamme, and the last two years of the Bellefontaine, which is the cognac finished, and the La Flamme is Armagnac. So those are all very, very special bottles to me because I absolutely love them. All right, on to the next. Okay, so now we're getting into sourced stuff. Um, these bottles over here, hiding out of the way, are bottles that are waiting for me to review them, and then they'll get moved to other shelves. So in the back we have a Journeyman, which is the Silver Cross that I haven't reviewed yet. And then we have a Devil's River Texas Whiskey that I need to review and the Lock, Stock & Barrel 20 Year Rye. A couple more from, um, oh dang, now I'm drawing a blank, Burnt Church. And a few more uh, from Broken Barrel that I need to do. Speaking of Broken Barrel, over here we have a bunch of ryes, all sourced ryes. So this is a Broken Barrel Rye, which uh, this one is actually uh, from Kentucky, and they don't disclose exactly where it's sourced from uh, on the bottle, but it just says Kentucky. And then Michter's, Fourgate, Redwood Empire, Pikesville. Uh, Pikesville shouldn't be back there. It's not sourced. That doesn't belong there. Oh, you know what? I guess these are just random rise. They're not really just sourced rise. There's a couple in the back that aren't sourced. And then we have the Redwood Empire Lost Monarch. So this is a boar eye and... The four gate bry, so I put those next to each other for you know. I kind of like to uh, separate things out by flavor profile or what they are, and um, and also my ideological feelings about things. Let's move on. Now over here we have a couple weeded whiskeys. We have um, Weller Special Reserve and a Maker's Forty Six Cast Strength, and I don't have a ton of weeded whiskeys. Um, other than this one's supposed to be over here that I moved around from yesterday when I was having a couple pours. The Fiddler Heartwood is probably my favorite weeded whiskey that I have. And then Broken Barrel again. Now this is an Indiana bourbon and it was a rare Americana store pick. Um, I think it was Bourbon Lens did this store pick and, and that's a hellaciously good bottle. Then I've got some Barrel King bottles right here. Uh, this is probably my favorite one so far, the Sassy Patty, and Stag Jr. finished, and then the Alpha, their very first release from a while back. And then I've got the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend, and the Murray Hill Club, and, can't find these anymore, a Bell Mead Cast Strength Reserve, the real Cast Strength, uh, before they ruined everything and went to a batched Cast Strength instead of single barrel Cast Strength. So that's that for that. Now down here we're getting a little international. Okay, so I have all of my Irish whiskeys and some Japanese whiskeys. 
Um, the Shin 15-year Japanese whiskey from, I got that from Total Wine. It's probably one of my favorite Japanese whiskeys that I've ever had. And then I have the Nikia straight from the barrel, the Yamazaki 12, uh, Hibiki 12 in the back, and this 30-year-old, I'm not gonna pronounce that. And it's also very delicious. But then I have some kind of fun Irish whiskeys. I have this Jameson bottle from the 1980s, a Jameson 12 year, the Jameson 18 year Bow Street cast strength, and then the Jameson Black Barrel Proof, which is only available in Ireland. I had to have that shipped in. And then I have a Red Breast from the 1960s. It's somewhere around 1968. And um, that, so good. Then the Red Breast 12 year cast strength, red spot, blue spot, and then one of the Method in Madness, the Spanish, Spanish? Chestnut. Uh, I can't remember which one it is. I'm not pulling it out right now. But yeah, all amazing, amazing bottles. Over here we've got some scotch. So we have the Boone Hobbin 18 year, a Tanish 13 year, uh, Linkwood 11 year, Tamdu 19 year. I like um, single barrel, cast strength, independent bottlings of scotch. That's kind of what I prefer to drink. Um, Compass Box, the Hedonism, the limited edition anniversary one that's out of this world. And then we go into some of my really special ones. This one is a Bunahaman 28 year. That's literally one of the best scotches I've ever tasted in my life. It's probably my number two ever. And then a Linkwood 19 year. And then a couple of Black Art um, 04.1s, 23 year old, unpeated single malt scotch. And those are absolutely my favorite scotch ever in history and then i've got a couple abalore abudnas um some of these are pretty old the one that's open here is a 46 and i also have a 47 another 46 and a 34 this is the oldest one in the collection and they're i think their batch numbers now are over 100 so these are from over a decade ago and they are sherry finished absolute magic. All right, that's it for that show. Up here we have all of my tequilas, my, you know, more special tequilas, or expensive tequilas, I guess I should say. I have a few other tequilas in a different cabinet that are just drinkers. And then I have my Canadian rye sitting up here as well. So I've got Tears, some Fortalezas, uh, El Tesoro, and a tequila, a couple tequila Ochos. Um, this one's an extra Anejo back here from 2015. And this is just the regular Blanco that I love drinking over ice. Uh, it just got a beautiful cracked black peppercorn note that's just out of this world. And then I'm gonna lower you guys down so you can see these shelves below. And the rest of these shelves, because I'm sure you're wondering where's the rest of my whiskey. These are all the bottles from here down that I, I share with Patreon. So over here, I've got some smoky scotches, which are bags and a Lagavulin and some rums and some Irish and Irish. Yeah, Irish and Irish. And then some little sample bottles here that are also going out to patrons. And then below that, we have all kinds of weird stuff, random bottles of several different makers marks that I'm clearing out. Uh, OKI back there, Reserve, 2021 Yellowstone, some Remus, some uh, Old Forester, some Senator, some Basil Hayden Subtle Smoke, which was a little hard to find. I kind of like it, it's just too thin. It just doesn't really do much for me. A couple of my whiskey experiments, and then we'll scoot down a little lower. Now down here we have some more Remus and a bunch more, a bunch of High West that I'm sharing out. Some Bull Runs, um, that Watershed Nochino stuff, 
and some smoke wagon, some Penelope. There's a bunch of stuff down there. Uh, Sam Houston, Calumet, Duke, whole bunch of stuff. And a little sample pack here. This is a, a six-way blind flight that goes. It's going out to patrons too. So yeah, so all these ones that I share over here, we call that Santa's share, and they're just like kind of open bottles that people can pick from uh, to sample each month. Anyway, so that is the collection. And you're probably wondering, where's the rest? Well, down at the bottom, I've got a bunch of unopened bottles. I'm not going to go through those. They're not important for the story. Anyway, there you go. I hope that one guy's happy.